In April of 2020, Mo Yang decided to release the weirdest snapshot of all time and today I will be attempting to survive 100 days in the snapshot called the Infinity Snapshot. This snapshot is crazier than any mod you'll ever see and in this insane journey, I can come across a ton of withers in the same chunk, the weirdest of dimensions and even death. This video includes about 20 hours of gameplay and over 30 hours of editing. So if you could just leave a comment for the effort, that would be greatly appreciated. And without further ado, here's an attempt to survive 100 days in Minecraft's Infinity Snapshot. Before we begin, here are a few rules that I must follow. Rule number one, I must not die. Rule number two, I cannot visit a dimension more than once. This rule may seem weird as of now, but it plays a crucial role down the line. Rule number three, I cannot get any resources from the overworld or the nether, unless I'm clearing out space for building. And that is why I will be using this map by this person called Yomikesta238, and that map won't allow me to get resources from the nether or the overworld. And so, with that said, here we go. Day one. I loaded the map and it's time to begin. I can see three things in front of me. I take a step towards the barrel and as you can see from the sign, I can use this barrel to travel across dimensions. I take the book in hand and type out whatever was going in my head. Day one, of course, that's what I write. I go in F5 mode for this auspicious moment. I then threw the book in the portal and jumped in. Hopefully, I don't die on my first day itself. And luckily, I don't. This world was basically a biome of some kind of glazed terracotta, which seems a bit useless to start off with, but I see some pumpkins and... I mined 10 pumpkins as 10 is quite a good number and then I head back towards my portal. As I took the second book in hand, I heard some zombies. I would have to be really quick in finding some kind of resourceful world otherwise these zombies will eat me and I don't taste very good. Trust me. Some kind of wooden world would definitely help. I hopped into the portal and it turns out to be the same kind of world as the last one but instead of terracotta and pumpkins. This one had grass and cords, which I'd say is quite a useless world. I decided to roam around a bit and then... Mind out 10 dirt as 10 is quite a good number. I then headed back to my portal and wrote my third book in desperate need of help. I hoped that this time I would finally get a good resourceful world, but I didn't. I still decided to roam around a bit until I came across a few enemies. And remember, if I die once, this counter at the bottom would reset and it's all over. Hopefully that doesn't happen to me again. I then threw in the fourth book and titled it as bad. Hopefully Minecraft would take some empathy and give me some good world. But instead it decided to grill my PC and gave me a world with a million leaves decking. I tried to get out of that world but due to lag, the portal denied to get me out of there. Two thousand years later. After a few minutes, I was finally out of that place and I threw my fifth book and came back a few seconds after entering because that world was absolutely useless. I threw in my sixth book and this one actually had wood. I immediately rushed towards the wood and decided to mine out at least 10 wood as in case you didn't know, 10 is a very good number. But before I would finish mining my 10 wood, I accidentally hit a stone brick. And that was a mistake. A silverfish came rushing out of that brick, followed by another and another and another. So I rushed back to my portal. I came back home and even though one silverfish followed me back, it wasn't that bad. I crafted a crafting table and all the things I possibly could, meaning I could only craft a single sword, which to be honest is still pretty good. I wanted peace in my next world, so that's what I asked for and that's what I got as I could see no harmful mobs in any kind of distance. But as the world itself sucked, I decided to go back. The next book crashed my Minecraft and the one after that broke my eardrums. But I did find hay bales which could be a good source of food. I minded about half a stack of hay bales and then... I heard the Ender Dragon. What on earth was the ender dragon doing in this weird food dimension? There's no answer to this logic and thus I went back home. I crafted food for myself and jumped in the portal as quick as possible as it was night time and I am not dying this time. This time I found a world full of acacia logs and along with honey and a lot of potted plants as well. I mined a lot of wood along with other stuff and 
headed back to my portal. I built a safety net around my house to protect me from the dangers of the night and also placed a few chests to store my stuff. The rest of day 1 was basically me visiting a few more dimensions and getting whatever blocks I could and then repeating the process until I find a good world. On day 2, I could have almost died if I stayed any longer in this cursed dimension filled with pillagers. The next book I wrote was Truly Greg, which if you watch this person, you know what I'm talking about. The Truly Greg world kind of sucked, so I decided to go back, but then I got engaged in a combat which I was definitely not going to win. So I blocked the mobs off and somehow managed to escape, but... It did take me an entire day but I somehow fixed the system using my big brain redstone skills and continued with the dimension hopping. The next world I found was literally built of coal. I got about 5 blocks of coal even though I feel like I should have spent a bit more time mining but it's fine. I returned home and at this point all I wanted to do was basically avoid the monsters of the overworld. I named the book Page and hopped back onto the portal. This world actually had wool floating around it which is honestly a game changer. I got about 4 wool and quickly crafted a bed as I reached home. I tried to sleep but thanks to these idiots I couldn't. One of the zombies actually dropped iron which is going to be quite useful. So I quickly made a shield which seems like the best thing to do then I slept. Day 3 starts off with me finding a super weird dimension with a lot of jack-o-lanterns along with a structure void which isn't actually visible in normal minecraft so this was definitely weird. I came back home and threw a book named Bruh in the portal and oh boy this one was a game changer. This world was full of bonus chests which one gets at spawn. I took quite a lot of loot along with some cords. I now had stone tools and even though iron was still missing, I was surely stacked. I then headed back home and threw a book named Mr. Beast 6000 expecting a world full of treasure but unfortunately this one looked like a world full of wool which kind of sucks. I did take some trapdoors from the world and then headed back home. I threw in a book named A Good World in hopes of getting a good world but all I got was a wooden world and I would rather prefer iron over wood in my current situation but I still did chop a bit of wood and then headed back home. I named the world as Etho Slab but unfortunately this world wasn't full of slabs either so I headed back home and slept. I woke up for day 4 and to summarize, day 4 was basically me just dimension hopping in hopes to find iron and cobble. That's about it. I did go to some interesting worlds such as Let's go. I'm not sure what I expected from this world but it was horrifying. Something like this would have been quite cool. Let's go. But it's fine. I did some more dimension hopping and got whatever new blocks I could along with those bonus chest worlds and day 4 honestly sucked so I went home and slept. Hopefully day 5 will be better. On the rise of day 5, I had one single objective and that was to somehow get iron or stone. Either of them will do the trick but my tools were going to break soon so I needed to find either of these things as soon as possible. But then I found a world of stone. But maybe I didn't. I then went in a few different worlds and started naming the books after content creators just like I did for Mr. Beast. I named the book after PewDiePie and 310. Believe it or not, this world had literal enchanting tables but I couldn't do anything with them as I had no books. I then named the book after myself and then little did I know the book with my own name in it would be the one that changes it all. I found a world that had stone. Finally, but, but wait, it didn't only have stone. It had minecarts with chests in it, which only means one thing. I now had an insane lot of loot but then I found out that this world had shulkers protecting this treasure. So I quickly looted whatever came in my path and sneaked out of the dimension before the shulkers could kill me. I did take another trip to the dimension just to get enough diamonds for a complete armor and even though I really wanted to and could have easily gotten enough diamonds for the tools as well, I escaped the dimension out of fear and on day 6, I made a complete set of armor. I recorded day 6 on Eid so I was actually AFK for most of the day but Eid Mubarak. Day 7 was basically me trying to look for an interesting world, maybe a world with another fortress or maybe an end with actual endermen. But all I got was a world with a million silverfish, the only thing I hate more than vexes. 
No, seriously, I I hate these things from the bottom of my heart. I then decided to throw in a book named YouTube, and to be honest, it wasn't that interesting. After a few more dimensions, I got bored of thinking names, and I simply wrote an E in uppercase. We already have done an E in lowercase, so will the E in uppercase be better than the first one? The answer is yes, definitely. This world was a literal YouTubers off-camera mining dimension. It was a diamond world. I just couldn't resist myself and spent the rest of the day mining. I got about nine stacks of diamonds, and I am pretty sure I would never need anything more than that. Day eight, I enchanted my diamond sword with the book I found in the mine shaft. I then threw in another single alphabet book and got nothing but a blank end dimension. But unlike the last few times, this one had endermen, so I decided to get as many ender pearls as I could. I made a safety stand, so while I beat the endermen, they can't hit me back, which seems hundred percent fair. I spent the entire day collecting ender pearls and got about half a stack of ender pearls, which should probably be enough to find the end, along with some extra pearls to clutch with if I need it. Another day with great. Progress being made. Day nine. I lost my footage due to electricity problems, but the only thing that happened was that I found a world with bookshelves. That's it. The next day. On day ten, I could finally continue with the challenge. As I earlier found a world with bookshelves, I could finally make an enchanting set. So I made room for the enchanting set to go and made the enchanting set. Progress was being made, and I was really happy with how all of this was coming along. On day eleven, I used up all the enchanting books I had to enchant whatever I could. I then visited a dimension named Poggy, and it seemed like one of those mine. Dimensions you would see in those mods and stuff. I did some more dimension hopping and then visited a dimension named Hello with an exclamatory mark, which looked way too normal for an infinity dimension, and that scared me. I dug down to see if the bottom of this world was made of some weird block, and sure enough, it was. I mined out as much dark oak logs as I could along with some acacia logs as well, and then returned home. The rest of the day was basically me collecting end stone for a building block, and that was about it. Day 12 starts off with me making an end stone part to my enchanting set. I then visited a bunch of dimensions. Named after computer-related stuff, and out of all of them, the access dimension was a little bit good. But then I found the dimension named H P, and that world was a literal treasure. I could use all of these emeralds to get unlimited XP and max out all of my armor. So from day 12 to 15, I spent all my time mining an insane amount of emeralds and trying to get the best enchants whenever I get to level 30. After three straight days of mining and combining multiple tools to make maxed out stuff without villagers, these were my enchants. I was quite satisfied with the progress made in these three days, and it was time to move on. Day 16 starts off with me visiting dimensions named after a single alphabet, hoping I would get something like the E dimension that was full of diamonds. But no, apparently it doesn't work like that. So instead, I doubled the power and visited a dimension with double alphabets, which did suck at the first few dimensions, but the greatest alphabet of all time was back to the rescue again i actually found a fortress i could not believe my luck and so i immediately returned home to prepare for the blaze fight but then a master plan struck my mind what if i could use water in that dimension as it's not really the nether so it should hopefully work and it did The joy on my face was as wide as the imposter in Among Us. This discovery was revolutionary. I bonked into the faces of the blazes without any hesitation and knocked them out with my looting three sword. I got about 16 blaze rods, which are more than enough, and so I then continued my dimension hopping. And this time. I decided to use colors as names for dimensions. After a few colors, I decided to visit the color red. And just when I thought day quarter of a stack couldn't get any better, I found a world of ancient debris. I was quite happy with my diamonds, but I guess you know what I must do.
and I've had stacks upon stacks of ancient debris so I decided to make a little cobblestone generator to make a lot of furnaces. Dang it. Better. I then spent the rest of the day trying to solve the fire issue around the generator which turned out to be quite harder than I thought. And also by the way, here's a view of all the debris I got. On day 20, I finally finished fireproofing and decorating my tiny cobblestone generator but it looked quite nice so I had no regrets. The rest of the day 20 was spent making furnaces and smelting out all of the debris. Day 21 starts off with me finding a world with lapis which is going to be super useful for enchanting. I also smelted a lot of netherite so it was time to gear up. I made the armor and waited for the achievement to pop up but it never did. That's because the new achievements weren't actually available in the snapshot which does suck but it's fine. I started naming books with random words used in conversations and the world named shut up I found gold. I intended on doing yet another mining time lapse but this time I was backstabbed by a bunch of enemies and this world was chaotic. So on day 22 I tried to brew fire resistance potions without an awkward potion and well I messed up. I realized I had to go back without any potions so I went in and I rushed towards the gold. I tried to make a little cave for myself to hide in but the blazes had their target set. I got about a few stacks of gold and then retreated to store it. I went back into the chaotic world and tried to get at least a few stacks of golden blocks but the moment I saw a vex, I was out. Even though gold would be really useful, I was not putting my life at stake and so I returned home. I spent the rest of the day enchanting books and trying to get some kind of bow or sword enchantments which I can combine to make overpowered weapons. But my luck was quite bad. By the end of day 22, most of my ancient debris had been finally smelted and so I took the time to craft a few netherite blocks and do the ultimate flex. On day 23, I continued my random YouTube naming. Evax, your world is alright. Recrap, your world is not bad and is filled with mool, meaning you have been to this place. Fru, your world is quite colorful, but if one of these blocks were to fall, my PC would explode. I named the world Etho and it was slapped out, which is quite accurate. I went to a few more worlds, gathered whatever I saw and came back home. On day 24, I found a world of pistons, which might be useful. I even found sponge and I'm not sure why I took that, but future me was grateful that I did. I then did some more dimension hopping and found slime in a world called Poctopia. I was writing whatever came to my mind and after watching a few Among Us memes, let's see how the dimension Among Us is. Is it sus? Turns out it's way weirder than I thought. This looked like a normal world so I decided to explore a bit and I found a guardian temple. I could not believe my eyes and for some reason there were no guardians in there but just in case they might be on the inside, I decided to take some sponge with me. On day 25, it was time to raid the temple. I checked the capital and jumped straight in. I knew that if they were on the inside, this would be the end. But I continued. I accidentally placed a sponge and it had some weird reactions. I was worried if this might work or not but I was still going to try it. As expected, I found an elder guardian that was waiting for me on the inside. Thanks to my respiration helmet and sponge, I easily took down the guardian and then pondered about what I did and why I did it because I got nothing in return and it wasn't that intense either. I left the 8 gold blocks in the temple alone because I was way too rich to be looting guardian temples. On day 26, I used water from that weird dimension to make an infinite water source. I decided to throw the book with the instructions and see what I can get with that. So I made a copy of the book and threw it in. But it wasn't that interesting so I came back home. I recently watched a few memes by Cowbelly so I decided to throw a book named the same. I found a normal world but with weird lighting. I saw some sheep which were quite rare in these infinity dimensions. So I made some space for the sheep to live and crafted a lead and lured them to my house. On day 27, I named the world as Bryfy and it was made of gold. So I mined as much as I wanted and went back home. After naming a few meme creators, I named the world as Meme and threw it in. To my surprise, it was a normal looking world. But when I dug down, I found Lapis Ore. I did need XP to max out my gear but I didn't realize how much time I'm going to be spending here. Because I went crazy.
another three days of straight mining and I now had a chest of lapis blocks along with some really nice enchants as well. I still did have 52 levels left so I decided to use all these levels and not waste them. I did some more dimension hopping with some really weird worlds and almost got caught by a wither in a really laggy world. After naming a bunch of random YouTube related stuff I threw in a book named like and I got yet another end type dimensions but this one had chorus fruit so was I actually in the end. According to my F3 screen yes but as I roamed around a bit I saw an end city. Was I actually raiding an end city before killing the dragon? Yes and I was shocked but it was time for another adventure. On day 32, I decided to raid the end city. I was confident because of the armor I had and how OP my weapons were. I visited the end city and for some weird reason, I couldn't find any chests, so I searched even harder. I killed a lot of shulkers and was pretty confident with all my gear, but then the unthinkable happened. While trying to find a shulker, I fell down. It all came down to this moment and I am not joking when I tell that I skipped a heartbeat while I was in the air. My heart stopped for a second, my brain was panicking but my fingers reacted faster than they ever did and as my fingers scrolled through the inventory, I saved myself. I then read it as carefully as I could and I reached the end ship but unlike the other ones in this snapshot, this one actually had an elytra along with some pretty cool loot. Day 32 was quite an adventure but it was time to end the day. On day 33, I found some super weird worlds and I gathered whatever I could but after a few worlds, I found a world named Shulker. On day 35, my valuables chest was looking better than before, so I guess we are good to go. I then visited a dimension with bamboo which is quite interesting and after a few more worlds, I found a slime world which was super laggy. I started doing a pattern of 181Z and let's see how this goes before I break my pattern yet again. The world 1L had a lot of coal which is quite useful. I got a lot of trapdoors and lamps from the world 1M which were also useful. On day 36, I finally broke my pattern and started naming random fruits. The world apple gave me an enchanted apple which seems about right. I then continued with the number alphabet pattern and after a few good worlds, the world 1R was cursed. I was greeted by lava as soon as I entered it but to go back home, I'll have to get out of the portal and then go back which wasn't possible unless I take the risk and go in lava. And I did that and started losing hearts super quickly. So I immediately ate an enchanted gapple which saved my life. I went back home and took a sigh of relief. And then I stopped with the number letter pattern and started using random signs. Which gave me decent worlds and I took whatever I could. Most of my day 37 went in mining netherite stairs and quartz ores. But I believe these would come in handy while building my base. The rest of the day was a lot of boring worlds. On day 38 I mined up all the quartz ores I had. And now I had more quartz than I'll ever need. The rest of the day was me looting up bonus chest worlds for food even though I had hay bales at home. I also started a random pattern of 8's multiplication table so let's see how that plays out. It's day 39 and I must say the pattern of 8 is quite boring. I did find a world with soul sand so I gathered as much as I could. I then started naming a world without a pattern and after a few boring dimensions I found a world named missing and it turns out that it is actually missing. I was confused so I increased my render distance and I noticed that it had beams in the distance and it was time for another adventure. As I got closer, I noticed it was some kind of island with goodies. On day 40, I finally reached the island and noticed three beacons. These would come in super handy while making my base. There were two iron golems on the island as well, but they were clearly summoned using a command. So I killed them for no reason. On day 41, I threw in some similar books to Missing and even though they had the same effect, none of them seemed to have any loot. I then started a pattern of different school subjects and in the world named English, I found the coolest looking block in Minecraft called the Cursor. I decided to mine as much as I could and kept it safely in my valuables chest. On day 42, I started naming random verbs, articles and all that grammatical stuff. I then threw in a book named Noob because my friends called me that a few minutes ago and oh boy, I am so glad they did that because this world was insane. On day 45, I peeked into my chests and realized that I should probably start on a base now, but I had a different plan. Call me mad, 
call me crazy but i was about to do something that will make you jump out of your skin but sit tight because it was time to get creative I pretty much spent all of my day 54 trying to make a way for me to reach my AFK spot of my mob farm and I also did not know I could MLG so well. It's day 55 and my bamboo are slowly but surely growing quite fast if that makes any sense. Day 55 was also spent in making AFK spot for my mob farm. I AFK'd for half of day 56 and I did not know I could do 2 MLGs without fail. I killed all the mobs that stepped foot in the farm and it seems to be working quite efficiently. I wasted the rest of the day trying to fish for the first time with the new 1.16 mechanics but I had no idea how to do it. On day 57, I finally decided to visit some dimensions. By now, I had visited hundreds of dimensions and I was just looking for words to throw in. So I started naming cartoons and companies but those words turned out to be quite trash. But then, I found an interesting world called content and this time, Instead of beacons, this one was a skyblock island which was quite interesting. So I started bridging towards that place and found some actually insane loot. I left a new companion in water and explored some more dimensions. I placed the new block I found and threw the book it gave me and honestly, the world was quite good. I then threw in a book with the name of the person whose map I'm currently playing and I then realized Yomi Kester is an actual legend. So I set down a beacon and it was about time I went crazy again. It was day 61 and I now had a crazy amount of netherite, so I guess we can move on. I noticed that my stuff was piling up, so I guess it was time to build a storage room. I visited a world and found redstone which might be useful. On day 62, I threw in some random books and decided to build my storage out of whatever blocks I already had or if I could find any good ones, which I did. And that means it was time to get building. It was day 68 and even though my build looked quite bad, I was still proud of it and it was now time for the boring part of moving stuff from the mess to this place. The next day. It took two whole days but the stuff shifting was finally done and I tried to complete the tactical fishing achievement. But I didn't get it and even lost my friend which was quite heartbreaking. I did some dimension hopping but none of them seemed quite interesting. On day 71, I continued my dimension hopping and stumbled across a world called Mojang is Great. And in that world, I found iron blocks which were actually quite annoying to get because of these rat smelling mice who are literally named as a fish. Literally even their name is messed up. I hate these things. I still did get two stacks and a bit of iron and I then returned home. On day 72, I found a world with a blaze spawner but I was way too strong for these blazes to even damage me. I got a ridiculous amount of blaze rods and returned home. In a world named Step, I found cows so I brought them back home and got an advancement as well, which is always great. I also crafted a clock which honestly made a lot of stuff way easier. I spent the entirety of day 73 AFKing and using the mob farm so nothing to see here. But on day 74, I realized my territory had to be expanded before it eventually took over the world. So I made some resources to make a good looking border and also some resources for the flooring. I finished preparing the resources and it was time to claim my land as mine. On day 81, I added some more features to my base and in a world called Done, I found an insane load of iron which is always quite helpful. I spent day 82 looting mineshaft dimensions and a literal world of redstone. The rest of the worlds were quite boring. On day 83, I mined obsidian from those fake and chip worlds and made a diamond pile in the classic Iskal style. I even made a netherite pile on the other side to keep it symmetrical. By day 84, I was basically just trying to convert this into a flex land by displaying all my wealth as I didn't really need it. I also found a world named Loop and it 
it was filled with diamond ore so i used it to get as much xp as i could as i didn't really need diamonds for any other reason on day 85 i realized that the dragon fight was nearing so i decided to make an infinity bow which was way easier said than done as my luck with enchanting was quite bad but on day 86 i finally got an infinity bow which i then combined with my other bow to make an overpowered bow I did a bit of dimension hopping, found a TNT world and then in a world named only 14 days left, please help, I got in a bit of a pickle. It did take me all of day 87 but I cleared up all the mess and it was quite a relief. I found a world of shroom light which would be quite useful for lighting. On day 88 I smelted up all the gold I had and did some dimension hopping. By the end of the day I actually traded with a wandering trader and got 2 achievements with 1 move. I left my new companions in the pond to give them some freedom. And on day 89 I decided to complete as many achievements as I could. Sticky situation? Done. Hired help? Done. For the next achievement I tried a tactic from Fru which is honestly quite smart. I did need my elytra for it but I think it was was worth it. I also tried to find a wolf to tame but I couldn't so I got the advancement with a horse instead. On day 89 I attempted to do a seriously boring achievement but it took way longer than I imagined it to. It's day 91 and I finally got the achievement. Serious dedication. Spent the rest of the day trying to figure out an achievement I could try but I couldn't find any interesting ones. On day 92 I pretty much just simply prepared for the dragon fight. It was also during this day that I decided I won't be simply using the purple shulker or the hopper underneath it to teleport me to the end as intended by the map maker i'd like to take on a real challenge so i gathered as much rockets as i could and some other tiny stuff that i needed and on the dusk of day 92 i stared at the sun i had a strange feeling i wouldn't make it back a strange feeling bugged me but i tried not to let my moral down and went to bed for day 93 i woke up on day 93 with the best spirits i could for the sheep for the cows for our companions the dragon had to be killed. So, I set off on my journey. We went past the mountains, past the ocean and even the dolphins seemed to be with us. This uplifted my confidence and helped me defeat all the enemies in the stronghold with ease. I found the portal room and all of a sudden I felt like I had a responsibility. A responsibility to return home with safety. I can't imagine my pets without my assistance and I guess it was about time. On day 94, I entered the end. I was ready to slay the dragon but first I had to take down the crystals and that's what I tried to do. The dragon was aware that I was here to end her and so she punched me off my tower. I checked the gapple and tried again but this time I found success. I then took down a few more crystals and also dodged several threats from the dragon. It's like she really wanted me to leave but I wasn't leaving quite yet. I also took a bit of the dragon's breath and ticked off another advancement on the list. I also did a really cool clutch but the dragon kicked me off right away. I tried to do it again but I think I managed to find a nice little bug. I took down the last crystal, did my 6th MLG in a row and now it was time to take the dragon down. So I took a few shots, missed them all and then did a ridiculous amount of damage during the purge. I checked if the day had updated but no, it didn't. I turned on the hitboxes because the dragon was wrecking me with fireballs and I could not afford to die. The hitboxes helped more than I thought they would and when the dragon came to purge again, I almost killed her but she escaped. I feel like the hitboxes increased my accuracy because my shots landed correctly and I tried to kill the dragon in air, which with one last shot was done to perfection. This was way easier than I thought it was but I had done it. I stole the dragon's egg and returned home. I felt victorious. Was this the end? Yes, but maybe not. I thought about what I could do to pass time until day 99 because I had one major project which I will only do on day 99. I did some few random stuff on day 95 and that's about it. Day 96 was spent in renovating my base and I decided to make an automated sheep farm. Day 97 was also spent in making the wool farm because I forgot the actual design. I took the first two sheep into the farm but for the life of me I couldn't find the third one. I finally found the third sheep and by the end of day 98 two of the sheep were in their places. By day 99 all the sheep were in their places and it was now time for the epic plan I had. I was going to build a throne. A throne which resembles everything we did and proves one single point that even with all the wealth in the world, all of it goes to waste when you place it as a block. A netherite block doesn't provide as much joy in building as much as a stone brick does and that's just the beauty of Minecraft. It's all perfectly balanced. I stood still because on day 100, I wanted to light the portal, the portal that started it all and on the dawn of day 100, 
I lit the portal which resembled the fact that with the help of three buttons and a portal I survived 100 days in Minecraft's infinity snapshot.